As time goes on, we see some more of these uh, good stories, positive stories come out, but take this with a grain of salt because I think we all know that we're in or due for some pretty reasonable amount of volatility coming up. And we actually talked about this uh, yesterday in yesterday's video. But um, when I see these types of things, like I can't uh, but get a little bit bullish, especially the giant that is Microsoft. And of course, this just coincides with uh, the uh, title and the thumbnail, of course, why you guys are here. And this was actually leaked documents. So Microsoft, this is from uh, Kitco News. Microsoft crypto plans leaked documents reveal plans for an Xbox crypto wallet. And here's what we have. This was uh, unredacted documents in the FTC's case against Microsoft. If you're not aware, I was not following this myself, but it looks like uh, Microsoft and Activision Blizzard gaming company, they're trying to do a merger and the FTC is blocking that as a $69 billion purchase for their reasons. Maybe they talk about monopoly or whatever else it is. I'm not for sure exactly why they're against it, but uh, hey, it's the FTC. What are you going to do? And what happened was these documents were actually leaked online, including the documents was an Xbox roadmap from May 2022 that detailed plans to integrate a crypto wallet into the next version of the console. Let me say that one more time. Microsoft, one of the largest companies out there, is or was, or maybe currently is, but not for sure because they're leaked documents. The plan was to integrate a crypto wallet into the console. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a pretty good case if we're taking a look at mass adoption. I mean, I could be wrong, but uh, I think Microsoft is not a small company, so it looks pretty good. Xbox chief uh, Phil Spencer emailed Microsoft employees by the leak last Tuesday, saying the plans were unintentionally disclosed. And when I first read this, I'm like, ah, it's the FTC making mistakes. But in all honesty, uh, this is Douglas Farrar. He is at the FTC. And he states the FTC was not responsible for uploading Microsoft's plans for its games and consoles to the court website. And actually what it looks like is that the court itself actually upload these documents um, for historical reasons or for whatever reasons they have for uh, the actual document itself. And they actually got linked. So the judge came out and said, look, uh, Microsoft provided the link on September 14th and the, and the court uploaded the exhibits to internet pages established for this case. So regardless, it doesn't matter who leaked it. I mean, of course it'd be we, we all want to pile on for government agencies, but it looks like uh, it might have been the court itself. And when I took a look at this, here's the leaked documents themselves. I linked these leaked documents in the description so you can check it out yourself. And I've looked over this thing like six or seven times, and I can't find anything, anything about what they were talking about as far as the wallet itself. Now, um, you are free to look at this and tell me where I'm wrong. But again, on these leaked documents, this is what they're referencing. I couldn't find it. And I thought to myself, well, maybe this is a dead story because maybe somebody got it wrong. Or maybe I just have horrible vision and I can't actually find it, which would not, not be outside the realm of possibility. However, I remember this one not too long ago. This was in um, August, 2023. And it looks like Microsoft has already partnered up with Aptos to marry AI and Web3. So when I take a look at this, I'm like, well, maybe there's something to these stories and it makes a lot of sense what they're doing. Here's what's happening. Aptos will run a validator nodes for its blockchain on Microsoft's Azure cloud. Why? For technologists, AI inspirations to come true because Microsoft wants to get into the AI game. Of course, that is what they did uh, with ChatGPT, and they want this to actually use these for their Xbox games and a whole host of other things that we're trying to get an AI. AI aspirations to come true, there's a growing need for transparency, trust, and verification of AI-generated content. For example, how do we know that LLM-generated outputs are authentic and trust trustworthy? How do we know that the training data is bias-free in the first place? Blockchain-based solutions can help with verifying, timestamping, attributing content to its source, thereby improving credibility in a distributed digital economy. That is a use case I did not think of. But think about all the different AI-generated videos that you've seen recently. And I got to tell you, when we come into the presidential election, which will be next year in November, 
I am scared to think about of all the fake videos that are going to come out that are going to be AI generated that look exactly like the presidential candidates. And I can tell you, I can see this from a mile away. This makes sense. And, I, and for this to actually work, I thought to myself, yeah, that does make sense for the blockchain because it's immutable. It's available to the public, can't change it, and it's available to everybody. So I thought, man, that's, a, that's a, actually a pretty great use case that we didn't know what actually was. I don't think that Satoshi Nakamoto thought about that when he was writing the Bitcoin white paper, but hey, here we are. So Microsoft's interest is in having incredible information to train models in a way that's verifiable, which is where Aptos fit in. Uh, in order to do that, you need an incredible, incredibly performant blockchain with high throughput. And uh, this is from Shaikh. Uh, I forgot his first name, but I believe he is the co-founder of Aptos. So, of course, he's going to talk pretty well about his uh, project, but uh, maybe this is true. Uh, we'll take a look, maybe do a deep dive later. Aptos blockchain can support up to 160,000 transactions per second, TPS, and has a, has a goal of reaching hundreds of thousands by the end of the year. It also ranks as one of the fastest blockchain networks alongside Avalanche with a time to finality of less than one second. That's according to Masari research. Uh, fast throughput, quick settlement times, and a cost to use at a fraction of a cent. Let me tell you, I like that. That sounds good. It's only something we can actually use. So to me, this is looking like a pretty good, positive story moving forward. But again, just because we talk about the narrative and there's great stories, just understand that we have to also take a look at the macro factors and also the liquidity and actually what's happening uh, in regulation moving forward. So this is a step in the right direction, but I can see things moving forward as we get into the Bitcoin halving and, of course, the bull run hopefully after that. So let me just think about that in the comments section. And then uh, to finish up, Alluvium. I thought this was perfect because we were, I just interviewed the co-founder of Alluvium this morning at eight o'clock in the morning. This is Kieran Warwick, the CEO and co-founder. And before anybody asks me, no, they didn't pay me to do this interview. And I think it's sad that we have to do this, but it is the state of the crypto market right now. We have to say, and we obviously we've always, I've always disclosed the things that I've done, right? Everything in the description is a affiliate link. I put it very prominently there. You can't stand affiliate links, just don't click on it, go right to the source. But for this one, uh, I actually, I interviewed uh, Kagi and Classy Games and uh, Hustle and crypto stash and they put me in contact with alluvium because they were talking about how this is the next triple a ranked game and what was interesting about this interview is that we didn't talk about we talked about the gameplay a little bit we talked about where things are going but we never talked about the web 3 aspect of it because now i get it it's not about the game and web 3 and, and grinding and you know, doing stuff like Axie Infinity where the game's not fun, but people make a bunch of money, I mean, the people that are early. And now it's just about games that people are actually going to play. And that's what's going to bring us to the next million, two million, 10 million, 100 million people uh, for Web3 is games that are actually people are going to play. And uh, I linked all the uh, socials and the different things in, in the description. But during this interview, this interview, listen to the time frame of what they're talking about. And we actually talked about time frames in this last video from yesterday, the 80-20 rule, and moving into 2024. Alluvium has been building since 2020. It takes roughly four to five years for these AAA rated games to actually come to fruition, and it looks like they're going to launch next year. What happens next year? Bitcoin happening. What happens after that? Hopefully some type of bull run, but we'll see. So what was interesting to me is the time frame, how everything is coming at the right exact time and also the token itself of how far it came and also what they're doing as far as the staking rewards which is a hundred percent of the revenue and i'm not going to spoil it but just listen to this interview it's about uh eight minutes long or so and uh, we'll come back and we'll do a quick q a and i'll talk to you about the token itself so let me play without further ado Uh, thanks for stopping by just to give us a little bit of a uh, refresh about what Alluvium 
is and what is going on. So welcome to the show for the first time. Cheers, Rob. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, and thanks for coming on at midnight over there in Sydney, Australia. I know that isn't easy. Uh, I don't know if you got kids, but uh, I think this is, we'll try to make this as quick as and painless as we possibly can. So let's just jump into it. I've got, no worries. yeah, I got three questions for you and I'll read them out so the audience knows what is Alluvium and what's the goal of the project. The second question is why will Alluvium be a massive hit? And the third one is what could derail Alluvium from reaching its absolute potential? So the first thing is first, Karen, I'm glad you're here. First of all, what is Alluvium? And what is the goal of the project? When we can see it over here, uh, you guys got uh, Twitter accounts. I'll link that in the description. Uh, here's the website itself. And, you know, we've got uh, gameplay. But just talk to us real quick about what's Alluvium, what's the goal of the project? Sure. So Alluvium is the first true AAA game that's being built on the blockchain. So it's, and when we say game, it's actually a universe of games. So uh, mm. we're building... Yeah, we're building three to start off with. The first one is uh, a land-based game, uh, very similar to uh, like a SimCity or a, a like a, a lesser form of Clash of Clans, where you, you're building on uh, this land, and and your job is to uh, generate resources and fuel, and that is is basically what powers the economy in uh, in the overworld. The overworld is, is more similar to like your, your Pokemon type game where you've, you've got uh, 200 plus creatures that you're going around seven different regions to collect. Wow. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very vast in, in the overworld. And then once you've built that team and, and you've gone and collected them, you're able to go into the arena and that's where it's uh, very competitive. It's similar to a game. Uh, called Team Fight Tactics, which is by Riot, mm -hmm. and the cool thing that uh, being on the blockchain uh, enables us to do is to have interoperable assets, which is essentially just a, a fancy name for being able to bring one asset or one character or one armor or, or you know one weapon or whatever from one game into another game into another game. Gotcha. So it sounds like. I mean, and these things that we're talking about, all these different aspects of it, AAA ranked games or rated games, we're looking at uh, for quite some time to actually put this out. Am I correct here? Because it's not like an overnight success. No, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we started building in uh, 2020. It was, it was about, about this time, actually, in, uh, in 2020. So, you know, we're, we're three years now that we've been building it. And uh, we were one of the first to start building in, in this type of uh, genre where, you know, we've had 50, $60 million in, in funding. There's the, the team is 150 people plus, and wow. we've really gone out and hired experts across all departments that we have from, you know, the art to development to marketing and operations and, yeah, it's it's been a very very big process, and it's taken a long time. But we're uh, we're, we're heading towards a, a, an open release very very soon. That's that's insane if we think about it. Because three years ago, I mean, this was just first hopes and dreams, right? And we were in we're, so just for for prosperity, we, you know, we take a look at the time frame. Right now, it is we're going into October of twenty twenty three. You know, two, three years ago, 2020, Web3 gaming was a thing, but it wasn't a thing thing. And now we go into it and you're saying that, let's say that you guys could launch in 2024 sometime, maybe towards the end of the 2024. And as, we've, as we here on the channel, we talk about these things, timing is everything. And going into this, you can see some, some massive appreciation and of course, a lot of people coming in. So I think that uh, the timing uh, could be fantastic. So that'll lead us to our last two questions our next question which is why will alluvium be a massive hit see with uh, with games and kieran you've been uh, you've done this for quite some time we know that uh, games take a long time and some are fantastically massive hits and some don't really make it for whatever reason so why alluvium why will this actually make it so we've we've cast quite a wide net and what i mean by that is we're building three games in three totally different genres. 
So mm. a, a creature capturer is very different to an auto battler, which is very different to a mobile idle clicker, right? Now, all of those genres in their own right have multiple games that have tens of millions of, of users in mainstream, right? So that would be the first thing, right? If you're going to put it, if, you, if you're going to uh, bet on, on anyone, we're attracted because, you know, all we need really is one of these games to become a hit. And then we have the, the time and the resources to build out the, the other two games or potentially, you know, go into another genre to, to, uh, to, to capture market share. And the second thing is we have built our games to be fun from the ground up, right? A lot of the, the mistakes that were made in 2020 and 2021 were essentially just making games where you might be able to earn a little bit of money, but what goes up quickly comes down. And so, right. uh, so we, we've gone with uh, a more sustainable approach where it's all about getting as many users as we possibly can, creating a, a very sticky ecosystem and a, a, an IP that people love to, to hold and, and to play. And then, uh, and then just, you know, monetizing after we've, we've got that strong player base. Perfect. You know, it's, it's, there's, a, there's a couple of things uh, before we move into the last one is that uh, I had Hustlepedia on, Kagi, Classy Games, and Crypto Stash, and they said the exact same thing. They talked about, they said, you know, it's not about the play to earn aspects and the tokens and things like that. Really, if, if these guys would just focus on the game, and what I like about Kieran, what you said is that we didn't focus on anything about NFTs. We didn't focus on anything about the tokenomics or token itself. What we focused on this conversation was how things are going, how it's moving forward, and why it's gonna be a hit. And you said, if we just make this game fun, it'll be great. Web 2 can come in, and there's nothing wrong with Web 2. And then if we take it to the next level for the Web 3, that could be the big thing. So make a great game. And it doesn't matter if it's just this one game, like you said, or three or four or whatever else you guys have as far as in your studio. I think that is a recipe for success. And we'll see how it works out. But if we're going to talk about the good stuff, let's talk about the negativity. Because let's see, a little, we'll try to be a little balanced here. So we know why it could actually make it. We just talked about it. What could derail it? from its absolute potential. Because I gotta tell you, I mean, the game itself looks pretty good as we just saw, but what could actually make this tumble down? So look, as, as much as I, uh, I, I like to balance things out and, and I'm usually uh, quite a realist when it, when it comes to these questions, because we've gone through so many uh, hardships and there's been so many hurdles that we've needed to get over things like uh you know getting low in runway and then us performing a capital raise earlier in the year things like uh barriers to entry like us not selling nfts to to start off with as a as a funding mechanism we just we, we were very against that uh and things like uh the onboarding process you know, we've, we've figured that out. So people in web two can literally be come into to Alluvium. You can play the game. We'll keep a wallet for you. So you won't even know that we're storing your assets for you. Mm. And we slowly educate you. Like these were all of the pain points, which I looked at, which were quite scary, right? Three years ago, I was like, if we don't figure all these things out, then, you know, we could run into some trouble. Now I would say the only thing that, could really hold us back as if all three of these games didn't stick, right? If, if, if there wasn't a single one out of the, the three that we're building that, that people didn't enjoy to play, that would be tough. Now, again, we've proven that we can build games and, and at a really, really high level. So I'm still confident that we would be able to go out to investors and say, hey, you know, these three games didn't work or they didn't uh, generate as much uh, interest as we thought, but you can see we're, we're able to connect up uh, a game to the blockchain. We're able to to build really good uh, experiences, and it's immersive with amazing graphics. Maybe it's just not the right genre, and then we go and start building again. But that's pretty much it that I can I can think of. You know, get surviving for three years in in this sort of a market. It it allows you to uh, to smash through quite a few barriers. 
Yeah, exactly. Well said. And I will just say this, always look towards the projects that are building in the bear because they'll crush in the bull. So for everybody, Kieran, first of all, thanks for stopping by. We really appreciate it. Uh, you guys can find all the information as far as what Alluvium is, website, and Twitter, all the socials will be listed in the uh, description below. But Kieran, thanks so much for stopping by and uh, we'll have you on again as uh, things progress. Cheers. Thanks, Rob. All right. All right, so hope that helps everybody kind of understand what Alluvium is and what it's trying to do. And again, just to make this 100% clear, no one paid me for that uh, interview. It just looks like a pretty good game, and we'll see if it all, all pans out. But lastly, there was a couple of things that he said about there as far as like a AAA rated game takes a long time. And that's very true. And that game right now is in beta. So I know there's some people that are, are available to play that, and you have to sign up for it, get access to it, play it. But when he talks about moving into the next year to actually release the game to uh, widespread uh, individuals or everybody, the thing that I have to think about is, well, what about this token? Because that's what we're here for, right? Let's just be honest. Everything we do here is speculation. There are certain tokens you probably hold right now that do absolutely nothing whatsoever. So when we take a look at this, I got to tell you, it never astounds me when you have a game or a studio or whatever, and they haven't had an actual game for the masses yet. Speculation, am I wrong? I think I'm right here. It's all speculation. And if we take a look at it over the last year, the high for Alluvium was $94.56. Now we're looking at $38. But if we max out, because I believe said that we're looking back into 2020 when they first started. What does that mean? That means that back in the day, this token itself without a game reached the price of $1,748.53, roughly. And now we're down all the way over here, 38.76. What is, so what is that for you? Well, if you bought at the top, it sucks. Let's just be honest. I personally didn't. I didn't even know this thing actually existed. But I will say, Moving into the next round, into the next year, let's say it does to come to fruition. Let's say that they do release this game. And we've seen the graphics. And this is actually uh, realistic, or this is the gameplay itself uh, from the game. This isn't some you know, uh, trailer that they put together. Actual gameplay. Looks pretty decent. If they can hit this, and he talked about the three different games. There is Alluvium Outworld. There is a card-based turn game, some type of fighting type of game, and they might actually go to mobile. If they do this, it could be good. Or if they don't deliver, it might not work out. And that's the whole thing with investing, right? So I will say that one of the last things that he did talk about, and this was actually off camera, I wish he would have said this, is that for the staking, for the token itself, is that when you stake it, and I link this out in the description as well, when you stake it, 100% of the revenue goes, in, goes to the stakers and the rewards. Now that could be based on tokenomics of what they did before, but to me, it looks pretty good and it warrants a deeper dive. So what I will do is I will do a deep dive into Alluvium, uh, the tokenomics, the people behind it, the community, the utility, the team, and the tokenomics, and we'll go from there. But again, just bring it to your attention. Might be something, might be nothing. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. If you got to take off, take off. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. And that's it for today.